Howdy folks, it's time for another Rum Talk, and this time, by popular demand, it is Barbosa Grog. Okay, so I asked on the last one of these uh, what you guys would like to see next, and this one got a few votes, so here we go. First off, I think this is pronounced Grog. It could be more of a French accent, but I'm not going to do that. Um, it looks like it's spelled Grog, maybe, or Grogu. I'm pretty sure it's not Grogu. So I'm just going to call it Grog, and if I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. It comes from a place called Cape Verde, which is a little group of islands off the west coast of Africa, sort of near Senegal. There is a distillery there called Montenegro, and they make this fresh-pressed cane rum uh, in wood-fired 300 liter pot stills from organic locally grown black cane, which I gather is a variety of sugar cane. It is 45% alcohol and distilled to proof, by the way, so uh, no water added at all. Uh, it cost me $60 here in Oregon, which seems very reasonable. Now I read on the Lone Caner, which by the way is a really great uh, rum blog if you're just getting into rum. He has just tons of reviews and, and all sorts of information about rum on there. The Lone Caner. I'll put a link down below. I read on there that they wanted to call this rum Montenegro after the name of the distillery, but they got into some copyright trouble with Montenegro, the Amaro. So they had to go with Barbosa, Armado, and Vicente, who are, I guess, family dignitaries or something. Now this bottle comes to Oregon thanks to La Maison and Vellier, who are a French importer, exporter, importer, exporter. They've been responsible for just a lot of really good bottles of rum, so pretty excited about them. Cheers to that. Quick side note, by the way, about this bottle. First of all, like a lot of Vellier products, it lists a lot of information on the bottle, including uh, the long fermentation time, wild yeasts, uh, that it comes from black cane, that it's distilled in a 300 liter wood-fired pot still. All this stuff is on the bottle, which is great. So this is in a 700 milliliter bottle, which is a little unusual for the United States. Up to now, it's always been 750 milliliter bottles, but I, I read somewhere recently that they just changed the rule to allow 700 milliliter bottles into the US, which is good because that means it'll be easier to get, you know, more interesting bottles from, say, Europe or Japan or other places where they normally make 700 milliliter bottles. So that's pretty neat. Let's give it a taste. Crystal clear, of course, totally unaged. It's got a very, you know, cane juice aroma that you might expect. Very fruity, you know, a lot, lot of those tropical fruits, but not, like, overwhelming. It's not it's not briny or olivey like some of the other ones we've tried recently. Pretty grassy, pretty sort of vegetal, very reminiscent of, say, an agricole or something like that. It's not, you know what it's not? It's not one of these, like, face-melting, super intense, you know, crazy, uh, out-of-left-field out of kind of rums. Um, so far, the aroma is very sort of contained. It's only 90 proof, which I think is great, right in my wheelhouse of drinkability. Um, some of these very high proof rums I find a little difficult to take. So yeah, a lot of mango, banana, papaya, I guess. Let's give it a taste. Compared to some of the things I've been drinking recently, very mellow, very approachable. A little hot maybe, but not, not vinegary like a Hamden. Uh, not super mm. olivey like some of these, like like some of those uh, Clarins or the Core Core that we had recently, which yeah. is actually I found to, to be like less insane than some of them. This is even even less insane than the Core Core. So this is like some very nice fruits, um, a little bit of a bite to it. Um, delicious. Some people would probably say you know up the alcohol a little bit to get a little bit more flavor or make it a little punchier, but I like it like this. I don't, I think those higher proof ones I've been finding very hard to drink, so. I think if you're interested in some more out of the way rum, something a little off the beaten path, but you're not really interested in those like super briny, like crazy ones, like like, like a Paranubes or something like that, um, I think this would be a great introduction. $60, not bad. Um, and it actually, it might make a nice drink. I'm thinking we maybe should try and have a daiquiri. And there you have it, quick daiquiri. Let's see how it is. You get a lot of those fruity, raw cane, 
sort of aromas right off the nose. I had not tried this before. First of all, daiquiris are the best, mm. of course. Amazing. Mm. Uh, normally in a daiquiri, yeah. you know, I would put in something Jamaican. I would put so a little a bit of funk, a little bit of character to the rum, or I would do something dark like um, like a demerara rum or something like that to keep the daiquiri interesting. This is very interesting all by itself. Um, a lot of those fruity flavors really come through in the daiquiri. This is uh, an excellent daiquiri. Uh, I might have to try this in an El Presidente later. We'll see. Maybe I'll do that. Stay tuned. All right. I guess that's all I've got for you. Barbosa grog is delicious. A little unusual, but not undrinkable. Like a, a reasonable proof if you are want to try some interesting rums, but you don't want these face-melting barrel-proof uh, rums. I say give it a go. $60 where I live. That's not too bad at all. That's all I got for you. Hopefully that was entertaining and or informative. I think next time we'll go for this Agricole from Reunion. Um, see what we think of that. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. We will see you next time.